Hey guys, welcome to Hip Use History. I think it's about time we did it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do the impeachment video. What does it take to impeach a president and remove them? As you can see, it's a two-step process and you're already learning something. How about that? So why don't we go giddy up for the learning and go get her done right now. So the idea of impeaching and removing a president goes back way old time to like England and such. But Hamilton writes about it in Fed 65, where he says that it is a method of national inquest into the conduct of public men. At the end of the day, impeachment and removal is a people's choice. It's the ultimate accountability that high officials have to the land that they rule over, to their subjects. So the actual language for what it takes to get impeached is in Article 2, the president's section, the executive section, in Section 4. So why don't we just read that to you right now. The President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. So as you can see, it's pretty clear that it has to be either treason, your Benedict Arnold, bribery, right? I'll do this if you give me that. Or high crimes and misdemeanors. And that's the language which is completely interpretable. So as you see all these talking heads on TV saying, yeah, you can be impeached for that or that or that. It's up to Congress. It's up to Congress to decide what that language means. So if they want to decide that, you know, loitering is a high crime and misdemeanor, they might be wrong, but they have the ability to do that as well as obstruction of justice or perjury, violating the oath of office, the emoluments clause, or even murder. But at its base, this is a political question. They're not getting convicted and going to jail. Now, if they're convicted in terms of being removed, they're still going to be liable in a criminal or a civil sense, which would be a separate trial unless they receive a pardon. All right, now that you know what it takes to get impeached, let's look at the actual process of impeachment and removal. So let's start with the House because it's the people's temple. And that's the idea that the House of Representatives is the closest to the people. And if this is a method of national inquest, it has to come from the ground up. There has to be a swell of anger from the public that's going to push Congress to do something. Now, in the history of impeachments, you know, we have Andrew Johnson. That's actually a Republican House going up against sort of a Republican president. But for the most part, it's designed to be a partisan process because it only takes a simple majority to impeach in the House. So when we look at Richard Nixon, who was getting impeached before he quit, that was a Democratic House investigation, as well as it being a Republican investigation when Bill Clinton was impeached. But if we go back to that idea, it's totally up to the House. So if it's a Republican majority right now, it would have to take a lot to push that majority to go up against their own president. And then they would do it just like they're passing a bill. You would need a majority to bring it to the floor. It would come out of a committee, probably the Judiciary Committee, and then there would be a debate on the floor and a vote on the floor. And they would vote on each individual article of impeachment, whether that be obstruction of justice or perjury or loitering or... Murder. And if any of them get a simple majority, then it's going to be shifted over to the other side. And the other side, of course, is going to be the Senate. The best way to think about this is the House is almost like a grand jury where they are presenting evidence to themselves to decide whether or not there's enough evidence to indict. That doesn't mean you're removed. It just means, ooh, ooh, ooh you in trouble. So the actual trial, the removal, is going to happen in the Senate, and this is laid out in Article 1, Section 3. Why don't we just read that to you as well? The Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. So as you can see, concurrence of two-thirds. So it takes today 67 senators 
officers to find a president guilty or convict them and remove them from office. That's a high bar to pass. It also says in that language that the chief justice shall preside over the trial. So the ones that indicted the president in the House walk over to the Senate and they're going to be the lawyers for the people and try to convict that president. You're also going to have the president themselves, or if it's a vice president or somebody else, have their own lawyers that are going to do their own defense. Now, the actual rules for the trial, they're set by the Senate. So in terms of the length or how many witnesses or the types of questions or anything procedural is going to be set by the Senate, and then the chief justice would rule on questions that go to that procedurality. Is procedurality a word? It certainly sounds like a word. So there you go, two-thirds necessary to convict. Now, once they're convicted, certainly they're liable in civil criminal courts. So um, that would be a whole separate issue if you wanted to send the president off to jail. But of course, um, the new president could also issue a pardon, which occurred with Gerald Ford and Richard Nixon. All right, why don't we take a look at some examples of impeachment and attempted removal of high officials. Now, it hasn't been used that much. And of course, we're not just talking about the president. You can impeach federal judges. There's been more than a couple dozen federal judges that have been impeached. Only a few have been removed. We also once tried to impeach and remove a senator, and the Senate was like, that's one of ours. So they do that through a different process. The Secretary of War was impeached and was found not guilty. We also had a Supreme Court justice. Most uh, historians see this as a partisan attack on uh, Justice Samuel Chase in 1804 who was found not guilty. But in terms of the actual presidential examples, we have Andrew Johnson, who is really a Republican in name only. He's a Southerner, he's a Tennessee, and now that Lincoln has been shot, he's the president of the United States with a radical Republican Congress. And when they passed a new law called the Tenure of Office Act, which would have made Andrew Johnson bring his new cabinet officials over the Senate for approval, um, he didn't like that very much. Neither did the Constitution, by the way. That's going to be ruled unconstitutional. But Andrew Johnson, when it came to his secretary of war, appointed him anyway, and he said, what are you going to do? And the House of Representatives impeached him for violating the Tenure of Office Act, and he was found not guilty by just one vote. They almost had that supermajority. Now, Richard Nixon was going to be impeached. They're ready to pass the articles of impeachment in the House when some big wigs from the Republican Party walked down to the White House and said... I think it's over. And Richard Nixon agreed and he resigned. Now, in the 1990s, Bill Clinton was impeached for obstruction of justice and perjury. And that was basically a partisan type of vote. It was only Republicans in the House that voted for it. There was really no chance in the Senate. So there are political scientists that look back and say this was a complete kind of political action to weaken the president himself. He was found not guilty on both counts, 50-50 tie on obstruction and 45 yes and 50 no on perjury. And there were some Democrats that said he probably was guilty, but I didn't think that was enough for removing him from office. So there you go. Now you have some examples. You know how the procedure works. You've read the Constitution. What do you think? So, of course, I'm saying, what do you think about Donald Trump? There are some people that are saying he has already violated his oath of office or the emoluments clause, obstruction of justice, that he should be impeached right now. Of course, that would be pretty impossible with a Republican majority in the House. It would take a lot of pressure to get them to do that. And, of course, there are people on the other side that say this is hogwash, that everyone's just out to get the president, including the media and um, the powers to be, and that this is just much to do about nothing. Thing. So what do you guys think? Leave it down in the comments below. Just be sure to be civil because remember, debate is an American art. And make sure you check out all the other videos we have and subscribe. If you go to hiphues.com, you can check out the video arsenal where they're all organized into little like sock drawers and such. Over 420 videos. All right, guys, I'm going to say it because they say it at the end of every lecture I've ever done because I believe with all my heart, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time. You press my buttons.